How did crocodiles get to America? Crocodiles are some of the most ancient and fearsome animal species inhabiting our Earth. Their very first ancestors appeared as early as 200 million years ago in Africa, but somehow there are crocodile species inhabiting the Americas today. How did they get there? At the time, the Americas and Africa were still a single landmass, and it was only about 130 million years ago that the continental drift started moving them apart. However, American crocodiles diverged from the common ancestor with the Nile crocodile in Africa just 7 million years ago, much after these continents were separated by the vast Atlantic Ocean. This is Wild Facts, and today we will tell you the story of crocodiles, from their extant species to the evolutionary tale which brought them to America. Before we start, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell so you're the first one to see our new video. Crocodile Species Today there are over 25 animal species called crocodiles spread across three separate families. The family Alligatoridae with eight species including caimans and alligators, the family Gavialidae with two species of gaharals living in Asia, and the family Crocodilidae with about 15 species that are called true crocodiles. The biggest and most widespread genus of the true crocodiles is the Crocodilus and species belonging to it can be found in tropical areas all around the world, from Australia and Asia to Africa and the Americas. For example, in Australia and Southeast Asia, we can find the saltwater crocodile, which is not only the largest crocodile species, but also the largest reptile species as a whole. It can reach a length of over 20 feet or 6 meters and weigh nearly 3,000 pounds or 1,360 kilograms. This species is the apex predator of its environment and arguably the most hypercarnivorous in the world. It can eat prey that's over 90% of its own body mass, including large mammals like kangaroos, wild boars, orangutans, and even tigers. Insanely sharp teeth and a bite force of over 3,700 PSI make the saltwater crocodile one of, if not the most powerful extant predators on Earth. Moving to Africa, we can find the Nile crocodile, which inhabits over 25 countries in Africa, primarily in the sub-Saharan region of the continent. It grows up to 15 feet or 4.5 meters long and weighs over 900 pounds or 410 kilograms. However, individuals comparable to the saltwater crocodile have also been recorded. The Nile crocodile is equipped with over 60 teeth that generate the strongest bite force of any animal, 5,000 PSI. This species is considered to be an ambush predator waiting just below the surface of the water until its unfortunate victim comes close enough for it to strike. Because the Nile crocodile has teeth shaped like cones, it's virtually impossible to escape its jaws. While smaller prey like fish are swallowed whole, bigger prey, including anything from zebras to buffalo, are either drowned in the water or thrashed against the water until it dies. Finally, in the Americas, we find four species, the biggest being the American crocodile, growing up to 20 feet or 6 meters long and weighing up to 2,000 pounds or 907 kilograms. Together with the saltwater crocodile, it's the only crocodile species to prefer saltwater habitats, living in swamps, salt lakes, and coastal areas around the Caribbean and Florida. Just like its Australian and Asian cousins, the American crocodile is the apex predator, preying on most animals it encounters, including mammals, fish, birds, crustaceans, amphibians, and even carrion. This species is unique among other crocodiles in its communication, as it uses complex acoustic signals during the mating season. So just how did this species, together with Cuban, Orinoco, and Morlet's crocodiles, reach the Americas while their ancestors originated thousands of miles away in Africa? Evolutionary Tale of Crocodiles The crocodile evolutionary story begins about 200 million years ago during the shift from the late Triassic to early Jurassic epoch. They are actually the closest living relatives to birds, as birds are considered reptiles and are direct descendants of dinosaurs. But that's a topic for another time. The crocodile ancestors were incredibly similar to current crocodiles, but were smaller and had shorter snouts. More importantly, they were land animals, including not just carnivores, but also omnivores and even herbivorous species. Over time, crocodiles became more and more aquatic, starting to inhabit wetlands, rivers, and lakes. Now we should mention the closest recent relative to crocodiles, which is the Bois Robustus. This species inhabited Madagascar for millions of years, and it's estimated that it was over 16 feet or 5 meters in length and weighed about 375 pounds or 170 kilograms. 
Bois robustus was incredibly similar to the Nile crocodile and only went extinct about 2,000 years ago when humans arrived in Madagascar. After the genus Crocodilus diverged from the genus Bois some 25 million years ago, crocodiles continued to evolve in Africa and spread in both directions of the globe. Some crocodiles moved to Asia and later Australia, and some to the Americas. It's easy to understand how crocodiles could have reached Asia and it's connected to Africa by land, but how did they get to Australia and the Americas? As you might know, there are many animal species that somehow got to Australia from Asia, and it was thanks to the continental shelves of Southeast Asia and Australia. It's parts of the land that today are submerged hundreds of feet below the water. However, these shelves became exposed during the ice ages thousands of years ago due to falling sea levels. The shelves became land bridges connecting mainland Asia to island chains in the Pacific, enabling animal species including crocodiles to migrate and reach Australia. That explains how we, humans, managed to get to Australia. So crocodiles reaching Asia and Australia is clear. But what about the Americas? There was a similar land bridge that connected the Americas to the outside world. It's called the Bering Land Bridge. It appeared about 30,000 years ago, much, much later than the crocodiles appeared in America. Most importantly, this land bridge connected Siberia to Alaska, incredibly cold areas that never hosted crocodile species. So how did the crocodiles get to America? The answer is much simpler than complex geological changes or shifts in global climate. Crocodiles got to America by swimming across the Atlantic Ocean from Africa. That's about 4,000 miles or 6,400 kilometers of distance. And while some crocodile individuals were recorded swimming hundreds of miles in a single day, it would still take them weeks to cross the ocean. So how did they do it? First of all, most crocodile species live in freshwater but have salt glands allowing them to tolerate saline water. It made it possible for their ancestors to survive in the Atlantic Ocean for days or weeks during the migration. But what about food? How could they keep moving without preying on their usual prey? Well, it's likely that on their way to the Americas, the crocodiles munched on sea turtles. But most importantly, crocodiles have a unique metabolic system. It makes them store nearly every single calorie of their prey and preserve energy by staying motionless. It allows them to go without food for months, and in some cases, even up to three years. It's likely that the migrating crocodiles ate well before their epic voyage so starving on their way to the Americas posed no risk at all. Most likely, the crocodiles unknowingly entered one of several ocean currents flowing from Africa to the Americas, accelerating their migration. Finally, crocodile females can store spermatozoa inside themselves months after copulation and wait for the perfect situation to use it. As a result, a single impregnated crocodile female could have swam across the Atlantic Ocean and populated the New World, giving birth to the extant American species in the genus Crocodilus. However, scientists think that it wasn't a single occurrence of one female or a group of crocodiles crossing the ocean. Instead, it was a frequent migration throughout hundreds of years, consisting of dozens and even thousands of crocodiles completing this spectacular journey to the Americas. That's actually nothing out of the ordinary. For example, monkeys originated in Africa, but there are many New World monkey species, including Kampuchins and Tamarins. Just like crocodile ancestors, monkeys from Africa migrated to the Americas by swimming across the Atlantic about 30 million years ago. However, these monkeys didn't just swim thousands of miles across the ocean as crocodiles did. Monkeys actually used rafts to traverse the water, but obviously they weren't nearly as smart to intentionally migrate and craft rafts themselves. Ocean currents carried the monkeys to the Americas on natural crafts of vegetation and earth, a natural phenomenon that's still observed in some parts of the world, like the Panama Canal. Evolution and the migration of species is a fascinating topic, and now you know how crocodiles got to America. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and suggestions for future videos in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel and check out my previous videos. Until next time.